Okay, today's lesson is the last of our conic sections. It's 10-5 called hyperbolas out of our textbook. So let's go and define it like we did with ellipses. We have a hyperbola is the set of all points in a plane such that the absolute value, why do we have to say absolute value? What kind of number do we get from absolute value? It means it's always going to be positive. The absolute value of the difference, and if you remember with an ellipse that we talked about last time, it was the sum. So it's a difference between the distances from P to two fixed points. So again, we're going to have two foci, and that distance is always a constant. So. What that says, and it's usually denoted with the letter K. So how do we write that mathematically? That means the distance from P to F1 minus the distance from P to F2 is always equal to K. Where K is going to be less than the distance between your two foci. But if you look at our picture before, when we had the ellipse, okay, we had this distance, any point on our ellipse, and we added these two distances and we always got the same number. Well, this time it's subtracting. And we say absolute value because it doesn't matter if you subtract this distance minus that one or this one minus that one. Absolute value means we'll always have a positive number and that will be equal to some constant, which is K. All right, so let's talk about some other characteristics that we need to know. The hyperbola consists of two smooth branches, so these are our branches. The turning point of each branch, which is not really noted on here, but we'll show it in a picture in a second, is a vertex of the hyperbola. The segment containing the two vertices is called the transverse axis. Okay, keep in mind, the vertex, verse, transverse, so they're on the same, which lies on the axis of symmetry. The two foci lie on that axis of symmetry. So the vertex and the foci are on the same axis just like they are with an ellipse. The center of the hyperbola is going to be the midpoint of the two vertices, which is also going to be the midpoint of the two foci. All right, and in the standard hyperbola, we have C is related to A and B. C squared equals A squared, if you remember when we did ellipses. In ellipses, we said it was a squared minus b squared. Well, in hyperbolas, it's going to be a squared plus b squared. And the length of the conjugate. Conjugate is the other axis, which is what we call the, this is like the minor axis. But, um, and that length, let me go finish that, and then we'll go back to that. The conjugate axis, the length of it is 2b. So b is representing half of your conjugate axis. A is representing half of your transverse axis, the length of it. Keep in mind, in an ellipse, A always had to be larger than B, and in a hyperbola, it does not. Um, the transverse and conjugate axes determine the rectangle that lies between those vertices, and we did this, we graphed this earlier, so hopefully this is easy for you today. The diagonals, of course, of that rectangle are where we have the asymptotes of our hyperbola. So, to put what we just talked about into a picture, okay, our focus, remember I have been saying since the beginning of this chapter, the focus is always inside your curve. So whether you have a horizontal or a vertical, your focus is always inside the curve. So when you're graphing things or trying to figure out numbers, you can always check yourself. Okay. The vertex is the end of that transverse axis, vertex here and a vertex here um, and vertical we're pointing to it right here this is the vertex so the vertex is the one that actually contains your hyperbola okay um, they were called the other endpoints okay that when we graph you'll see we're going to put an x but those are the endpoints of your conjugate axis so they're not called covertices when you have a hyperbola Okay, and these dotted lines are what we referred to before, the diagonals of your rectangle. That is an asymptote. Asymptote. And they're over here. And they're dotted because they are not part of the equation. 
any point on this line is not going to satisfy the equation. So these are just lines that assist our drawing of the hyperbolas. Okay, so my equation, if it is horizontal, x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1 then my transverse axis will be horizontal. So if it's starting with the x or the x term is positive, you have horizontal. If it starts with a y, x squared over b squared equals 1, then we know that our transverse is going to be vertical. So if you notice, our a and b never switch places. a, what I remember, a is always positive. It's under the positive term, or it's positive. So I could rewrite this to x negative x squared plus y squared. So it doesn't have to be first, it just has to be under the positive term. And if it's horizontal, my vertices will be plus or minus a zero. If it's vertical, it will be zero plus or minus a. My foci are always on the same axis with my vertices, so I would have plus or minus C0. So um, that is the same thing that we have with the ellipse. A is the distance from the center to a vertex, and C is the distance from a center to a focus. So that's nice. It stays the same in both of those. Um, and over here it will be 0 plus or minus C. And here's a place to write that relationship. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Next to that, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And last but not least, we have our asymptotes. Y equals plus or minus B over A times X. Or Y equals plus or minus A over B times X. Now, it is important for you to remember which one's A and which one's B. However, I want you to realize that this number in front is the slope. And so when you have the center, you're going up B units and over A units. And that up and down is what number is under the Y, just like the slope of a line. So it's B over A because B is under the Y. It's A over B because A is under the Y. So it's the Y over X slope of a line that you've been talking about for years. So let's do some problems so you know what you're going to have to be able to do. So what is the standard form equation of the hyperbola with vertices 0 plus or minus 4? Vertex vertices, that's the letter A, so I know that A is 4. And I'm going to go up and down and plot those two points. And then I know the foci are 0 plus or minus 5. And that means that C equals 5. But if I'm told these are my vertices, I know that halfway between is my center. And since it is a vertical, because my vertices were up here, were up and down, then I know that Y squared will go first. My center is at 0, 0. So it's Y squared minus X squared. How far did I go up and down? I went up and down 4, so 4 squared is 16. Okay, uh, I'm going to write the equation, so I'll go ahead and box that off. And now I have to go find out how far I went left and right, and then I'm going to graph it. So, um, this is that equation we have to know. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. C squared is 25, that's 5 squared, equals 4 squared plus B squared. Subtract 16 from both sides, b squared equals 9, which is all I needed to write that equation. Okay, now, of course, we need to know b is equal to plus or minus 3, because that's what I'm going to go. And remember, we put x's here, because that helps us remember that that's not where our graph is. But we do need to know it to do our box, to draw our rectangle. They call it a rectangle. Okay, so we're going to go draw that. And it's going to be something like this. So you're making a box where the points that you have are the sides of your box. And after you draw your box, you're going to uh, put a diagonal through your box. So we've got that. i got to extend mine just a little bit, but I found that. So you should go through the center. 
of your hyperbola also. And then you go back to where you put the dots, not the x's, and you're going to draw it approaching your asymptotes. That was a really bad arrow. Well, bad. Yeah. And do make sure you connect those vertices because those, of course, are points on our graph as we figured out before. Those are our y intercepts. Okay. The next one. Why are the vertices, what are the vertices, foci, and asymptotes of the hyperbola with the equation 9x squared minus 4y squared equals 36? Sketch the graph. Use the cal graphing calculator to check your sketch. Okay. Um, I do want to tell you we did this before in section one and we found the intercepts. But I hope you realize now after doing those ellipses it's much easier if we divide by this number here to make it equal to 1. So this would give us x squared over 4 minus y squared over 9 equals 1. And so I don't need to do that. That's not part of that. It's just something to assist. One very nice. Um, to assist my graphing. So this tells me that my center <clears throat> excuse me, is at 0, 0. And in the x direction, I'm going to go plus or minus 2. And since x is the positive term, it's first, it's positive, then I'm going to put dots there. And when I go up and down 3, I'm going to put an x here because now I know my hyperbola is going to go like this. But if you haven't figured out by now, I think it's much easier to do these problems by graphing and then finding out the information. So we're going to go sketch our box. So I sketch it and then I'm going to draw the diagonals of the box which I'll fix in just a second to be able to sketch our hyperbola. So I gotta extend this one and this one. Okay, so I will draw it, um, and as I mentioned, these do need to be dotted because they are not part of our, okay, that was really bad. Alright, so I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to answer the questions because you'll see, okay, I'm having serious problems drawing. Last one, there we go, that's better. Okay, what are the vertices? Okay, so now I don't have to worry about all those formulas. I can go to my graph because my vertices are those points on the box that contained my branches. So this is plus or minus 2, 0. What are my, I'm going to go to my asymptotes because i got to do some math to figure out the uh, foci. So plus or minus, from my center, I went up 3 and over 2. Up 3 and over 2 which is my y over my x. The square root of that number is 3, the square root of that number is 2. So I didn't really have to know which one is a or b. Absolutely you can do that, but I just want you to know sometimes it's easier to do it by graph. Okay, um, foci. To find the foci, I have to use this equation. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. I don't know what c squared is. But a squared is 4 and b squared is 9 because these are the numbers already squared and a is always positive. So c squared equals 13 and c equals plus or minus the square root of 13. Now how do you know if it's 0 first? Okay. And the vertices and the foci are always on the same axis. That's one thing. And when I talked about checking, the square root of 13, if you put that on your calculator, you should say to yourself, that needs to be more than 2. Okay, it actually is 3.6, which is out here, but that means your focus is inside your curve. So it's just a way to check yourself as you are working your problems. So we've answered everything. If you want to know how to check it with your graphing calculator, I'll be happy to show you. We are not going to do the word problem. If you really want to know how to do it, please come see me. I'll be happy to help you. Have a great day.